Hey guys, it's Katie. For those of you who that, that are completely new here, welcome. I talk about this series all the time, and it is arguably my favorite current series, as in a series that I've only read within the last like five years or so. And it's just, it's incredible. Let's dive into generally what this is all about. So, the Realm of the Elderlings is a very, very long series comprised of 16 books that are split into five subseries. There are also two novellas and six short stories. They all take place within the same universe. They don't necessarily all follow the same characters, but it all ties together in a fantastical way. Now, you're probably wondering, Katie, why should I read this series? It's so long. Yes, it's long. I find that it helps if you look at it in the individual trilogies or quartets that they are split into because they are separate stories. They are separate chunks. They are separate legs of a bigger story. You're probably wondering, Katie, I'm intrigued. Tell me a little bit more about what this series is about. Well, friends, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. So our main, main protagonist spanning the entire series is named Fitz. Fitz Chivalry Farseer is a bastard. He was born to a prince and he is taken to the castle and taught courtly life and more importantly, he is trained to be a courtly assassin. Now you're probably thinking, well, that actually sounds kind of cool and it is cool, but it's different than you're expecting because it is these are these books are incredibly character centric but another thing that is incredibly important for you to understand is that Fitz and all of the people from the place that he's from they're all POCs they really, really need to stick to this order otherwise you'll be incredibly lost there are potential other orders you can read them in at least the first two the first two trilogies could be flipped i'm going to recommend you not do that start with the Farseer trilogy, which is comprised of Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin, and Assassin's Quest. This trilogy focuses on Fitz's early life. So in this book, we start with Fitz when he's five or six, when he first comes to the castle and we go up through his teen years. So I think he's mostly in his early teens in this book and these books. So these are baby Fitz and just mostly a setup series. This is really just introducing you to the world, introducing you to the magic system, introducing you to the characters and all these kinds of crazy concepts. The end, just trust me. Trust me when I say this is a slow burn fantasy. I mean that in every sense of the word. It's not something to just enter in expecting all this action all the time because you're just not gonna find that in this particular trilogy. Um, because it's such a character-centric world and it is very much um, needed to set up the vast world that Robin Hobb has created. But the first book you're going to want to start with, as I said, is Assassin's Apprentice, which, as I said, starts with Fitz's early life and it goes to when he's like about 16. It really starts to introduce you to all of the characters and the magic systems that happen and they continue we continue learning that through the rest of the trilogy so that's the first one next we have the live ship traders trilogy and as i alluded to before this is a trilogy that you could read before fireseer if you'd like but i'd only recommend doing that if you don't want to commit to the full 16 series 16 book series but if you do want to commit, you must start with the Farseer books. You just, you have to. Um, and if you want to go back after you've read the live ship books, you can totally do that. But there are definitely some hidden Easter eggs throughout the live ship books from the Farseer books that enhance your reading experience. 
So, I mean, you can do it, but if you want the full-blown experience, I definitely recommend starting with the Farseer trilogy. But now, talking about the live ship books, these books follow a different set of characters. We follow the Vestrit family, and they are a trader family. Trader meaning, like, trading goods. Uh, and they have what are called live ships. And live ships are basically what they sound like. They are ships that can that come alive. Basically what happens is after three generations of a family die on a this ship, it quickens and it comes alive. And they are just these incredible vessels that are basically thinking, moving, feeling things. And their history and their experiences are some of the most incredible that I've read. And you will fall in love with these characters so hard. I adore this trilogy with my whole being. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start with Ship of Magic. This is the first book in this trilogy. And it follows, as I said, our families. Whereas the Farseer trilogy is first person narrative through fits only, this follows different family members from the Vestrit family, as well as the live ships that they encounter on the way, and some other characters. This is basically a pirate pirate trilogy. It's so much fun. It's just incredible. It's incredibly feministic. And uh just it's it's some of the most incredible writing I've ever experienced. Okay. So basically what this book is is it starts out with um the Vestrit family live ship, the Vivacia, coming coming alive and quickening. And due to several different circumstances, this ship ends up getting taken away from s someone who in the family who has been training and preparing for her entire life to be the captain of this ship. But because of, as I said, several circumstances, that does not happen. And so it's all about the journey of different family members really getting put into situations that they did not expect to be in at, that, at any given time. And it's very, very interesting, very intricate, and the characters are so well explored. Now we have The Mad Ship, which is the second book in that trilogy, and it pretty much picks up directly after the events from Ship of Magic, and I simply adored this book like with my entire being, and I can't express how much I loved them even more. Third and finally, we have Ship of Destiny, which just wraps up what ends up happening in just this overall trilogy. And you, in this book in particular, you really start to see ties into the Farseer trilogy. So if you are reading it in the proper order, you'll understand some things that happen in here that tie back into some things that happened earlier. So overall, this trilogy is incredible, phenomenal. This is really where I started to fall deeply, deeply in love with this series, even more than I had in the first place. Next, I'd 100% tell you to read The Willful Princes and the Piebald Prince, a novella that will enhance your experience for reading the third trilogy, which I'll talk about in a moment. And basically what this is about this is about is it takes place pre everything that we've read so far and it starts it's just going back to generations to learn a bit more about some of the magic elements and kind of how it came to be in the farseer line and uh, just getting to explore that and it's just it's a really really great book and as I said it, it enhances your experience for reading the third trilogy. The Tony Man trilogy picks up 15 years after Farseer. So I mean a lot of people tend to skip live ship. Don't do it. Do not do it. Trust me. 100% don't skip live ship. But a lot of people do and they just directly go here. As I said it picks up 15 years later after the events of Assassin's Quest 
And it, once again, we're with Fitz and the Fool, my heart. And a lot of, a lot of really interesting things happen in this book. They're going on a quest, again, to help aid the royal family, of course, again. And one thing that I absolutely adore about this trilogy is how deeply it really starts to explore Fitz and the Fool's relationship and just Fitz's relationship with people even more than we already got in Farseer. Once again, there are a few things that tie the Lives of Traitors books to these, and I definitely 100%, as I said, recommend reading them in order. Please, please, please read them in order. So the first book that we have is Fool's Errand, which I adore with my whole being. And as I said, this picks up 15 years later after the events of Assassin's Quest. Fitz is just chilling in the woods, living a peaceful life, doing his own thing, when he gets called back to courtly life because the royals have, they need him, they need him, as always. And so, of course, Fitz, being Fitz, goes on this journey and we get to meet some new interesting characters and uh, have more adventures. Then we get to The Golden Fool, which is really honestly 100% where things get very, very interesting. Um, this book in particular really, really delves into the relationship between Fitz and the Fool and also just getting to know Fitz better. I don't know. It was just a very, very, very good book. And I loved everything about it. And then finally we have Fool's Fate, which if you guys follow other people who've kind of read these books, most people will say that this is their favorite book of the entire series. It's definitely up there for me. I don't want to say that it's my favorite because it's not, but it is a very, very well written book and it is just phenomenal. And I mean, I'm really trying not to spoil you guys right now because just a lot happens in this particular book that really starts to shape things for later. But we'll get there. But yeah, this is the Tawny Man trilogy. 100% also one of my favorite trilogies. And now we're getting to the Quartet, which is the Rainwild Chronicles which once again follows a different cast of characters than in the Fitz books, as a lot of people lovingly call them. These books are, once again, multiple POV. They are not all in the same family, but they are all going on a similar journey. So, this book, these books obviously deal a lot with dragons. And, and basically what happens in the event of this is... <sighs> We have a, a cast of younger characters, so they're in their teens, and they are tasked with taking the dragons and finding them a new home. The Rainwilds is a very, very hostile place, and the characters that we meet, because we have, as I said, I think four POVs in this one, so we have Fimara. Leftrin, Elise, and Cedric, and they all ultimately end up meeting up to go on this journey to find the dragons a new home. This is also a very, very heavily, heavily journeying quartet, especially the first two books, because um, they're they're really setting you up for something. But Dragon Keeper is just really, once again, introducing you to these kind of new relationships and really starts to get into some of the dragon lore. Second, we have Dragon Haven, which actually, looking back on it, I really, really enjoyed um, a lot more than I did at, at first because I read all of these in a very, very short succession. 
But Dragon Haven picks up right after where Dragon Keeper left off, and a lot of the relationships get a little bit get explored a little bit more. But one thing I will warn you about in these particular books is there's a lot of teen angst. It's kind of written YA like, but it's also still very much adult. I enjoyed it regardless because it's a hob book and I got to learn a lot more of lore and a lot more about the dragons and just got to explore these relationships more. Third is my favorite in this quartet, which is City of Dragons. The cast of characters have finally arrived at their destination after many, many crazy adventures and things, and they start to explore the city. And this is where everything from the prior books, like all of the prior books, really starts to come together at least in a way, in part. It's complicated. And finally, we have Blood of Dragons, which is a very interesting book once again. Um, some other relationship things happen. Some characters that we saw from earlier in the books start to come back in unexpected ways. And I mean, when I mean earlier books, I mean earlier books in the quartet, not earlier books in the series. And uh, it's got quite an action, weirdly enough, quite an action-packed ending. Um, and I thought it was a lot of fun. Fun. So the Rain Wild books are really, really interesting because it really starts to really delve into the lore and just explore this new part of the world and these new relationships. So definitely don't skip these because that's something else people do they everyone just really wants to care about fits and that's great but seriously you need to experience the entire series it's too rich and detailed to just skip it all don't skip it finally we have the fits in the full trilogy which is the last trilogy and they are the last books of the entire series friends you thought you were going through some heartbreak things in the earlier books? You know nothing of pain. These books will destroy you. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, the first book we have is Fool's Assassin, which is the first book in the Fits in the Fool trilogy. And this takes place, oh, 20-ish years post Fool's Fate. This book is very, very different. It's the most different book of the entire series, and it's definitely a very interesting one. It's very introspective and retrospective. We're once again back with Fitz in his life, and he's living a quiet life at the moment with his family in the woods, and it's just really very much a period piece until the very end and then you're just left broken for a bit um this book is also a major setup for things that come in the last two books like in so many ways this book is very much a setup for the end kind of but it's good. It's not my favorite, but I really enjoyed it regardless because of just Fitz is really starting to deal with some things that happened in the earlier books and he's really thinking about a lot of things and it's just, it's very, very interesting. But other than that, we also get to, weirdly enough, we get introduced to a second POV in this trilogy and that character becomes very important later even more important than in this one and you'll see why but um we followed that other character's pov as well as fitz's throughout this trilogy <sighs> and then we have fool's quest which is my favorite book for the entire series of all 16 books and novellas and short stories, 
this is the one for me that is my fa it's just it's my favorite one so much happens two it's perfectly paced perfectly written the characterization is incredible and it's just phenomenal like seriously i cannot even fathom and express to you how much i adored this book it takes place immediately after the events of fool's assassin and what happens from there is just a wild crazy time and this really just a lot of our questions that we've had from the whole trilogy finally start to get answered of course we walk away with more questions than you know we had at the beginning but the fact that it really starts to just answer some really core important questions is just done so masterfully and i just i will never get over this it was so good so it is very much starting towards the major major climax that is the final book and um yeah it's just so much happens but it's so worth every single word i literally felt like i was living this book i mean this whole series is not one you just read you literally live it as you go but this one in particular i just i could not wrap my head around how phenomenal it was which brings me to assassin's fate let's just sit here and look at this book for a minute Okay. Assassin's Fate is the finale of the series. Fitz and the Fool are on a bit of a revenge adventure. And it is incredibly emotional. Inco incredibly raw. And devastating in many many ways it's also a bit hopeful and it's also complex i don't know how to describe it any more than that it's a culmination of all 15 prior books kind of in one i don't know how to describe it any better than that but so much happens so much happens. <laughs> this conclusion, honestly, is the best it could have been. It is, I know a lot of people have issues with it. it. This book is actually quite polarizing. Some people really, really enjoyed it as an ending. Some people really didn't like it as an ending. I can see why both parties are feeling the way that they are. It took me a little bit of time to wrap my head around how I'm feeling. I'm still working through it because it's only been a few weeks. And that's not enough time <laughs> but um i am leaning more towards that i liked it it was the only possible ending that we could have had for the these characters it was foreshadowed from very very early on and it was just honestly the perfect ending for them for me um as devastating and heartbreaking as it was it was just the only way the, really the only way that it could have worked with the way that the story was written and uh, I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about it but that's okay we'll talk about it some other time I'm going to briefly mention the other novella and the other and the short stories that I alluded to way back at the beginning of this video so the other novella is called The Inheritance and it's just a glimpse into another time in another part of the world is that this world is so vast that there's so much that is explored and yet un unexplored at the same time there were six short stories that is also has an order that you should read them in and I'll also post that below I'll just post the whole kit and caboodle down in the description it, the different short stories follow different little like kind of day-to-day -day events at random periods of time in the world and um, they're they enhance your 
already understanding of the world and it's just a fun time to read so I definitely recommend checking those out as well and once again the order I'm gonna put down below just read them that way like all of the series just read it that way because it'll just be loads 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 better I'm hoping that I convinced at least some of you to try try this series um, don't be put off by how slow Farseer is because it is definitely a very, very slow start. As I said, it's slow burn fantasy, very character centric. One other thing I should probably have mentioned a long time ago is that this series is full of 500 triggers. Every trigger you can possibly think of will come up at some point or another. A lot of people don't talk about it and they really, really should because there's a lot. Robin Hobb is a master at making you fall in love with her characters and then doing absolutely terrible things to them, which makes you love them more, which makes you also be in pain. And yes, it's a very, very emotionally taxing series. Hope I managed to convey what the series is generally about and explain to you explain this to you well enough that some of you might want to pick it up and that I've conveyed the order that you really really should read it in and if not I'm sorry as always feel free to like subscribe comment follow me on social media I've got a Twitter and a Goodreads which are both linked below and I've got other social media sites if you'd like upon request such as a travel Instagram a tumblr which you should to go follow that and a second twitter that's my personal twitter and as i said request them if you'd like and i will come back with another video for you guys again tomorrow okay bye